There are always spots on the kitchen floor that sweeping doesn't take care of. And when that happens, you have to do something else. And the something else that the nose does is called the histamine response. And according to the Institute for Allergy, Asthma, whatever, 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 histamine does four things. It increases the permeability of the basement membrane, so it leaks more. It increases the mucus. It irritates and increases sneezing, and it constricts the bronchi. Now, this is what you'll read in the Academy for Allergy and Infectious whatever. That big long name that I can never remember. Because they don't look at what these things do. But what does opening the basement membrane do? Makes more water. So you have more airway surface fluid. So you have wetter mucus. It increases the mucus because that's what collects all the garbage. It irritates and increases the sneezing because like Shiloh, you want to get rid of it. You don't want it in your nose. And it constricts the bronchi to protect the lungs because if you have garbage up here that your immune system says will kill you if it gets down here, one of the things it can do very easily is shut off the airway. So, like Christer Svensson, who looked at histamine and the results of histamine with his electron microscope in the back of the nose, his conclusion was this is a defense. <laughs> now, defenses need to be honored. They don't need to be treated. They don't need to be blocked. When you block it, this is the result of ear infections increased from 1975 to 1990, and I extrapolated up to here, and it seems to have continued its, its increases. This is the increases in asthma from 1971, and even better picture, because it has this long stable baseline before 1970, is the increases in asthma in uh, South Carolina, especially black kids, which are the darker bars. Why are these things increasing and why 1970? Thought about that for a long time and then ran into a pharmacist friend of mine and he said, well, you know what happened in 1970? What happened in 1970? I started practicing in 1973, but he was older than me. <coughs> in 1970, you have the effect of uh, over-the-counter availability of antihistamines, decongestants that are commonly called cold pills, combined with the uh, great society and Medicare and Medicaid that enabled poor people now to get access to these drugs. Because when I started practicing medicine in 1973, they would back their truck up to the front door of the clinic and say, how many boxes of decongestants and antihistamines do you want today? And we gave them out handful by handful to everybody. And it took them 60 years to realize that we were killing people. This was the FDA report a couple of years ago. 54 reports of death with decongestants and 69 with antihistamines from 1969 to 2006. Most were younger than age 2. Overdose and drug toxicity were the most commonly reported explanations. When this report came out, I called the FDA and I talked to one of the guys that was involved with the team. And I said, you know, have you ever considered the fact that this may be treating and blocking a defense? And he said, you know, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> but I never heard anything more about it. This is certainly not something that the pharmaceutical industry wants known. Asthma, that fourth effect of histamine, is closing off the airway. That's asthma. And asthma is a defense, but nobody ever talks about it that way. When I see patients with asthma, I ask them what triggers your asthma. What, what makes you have an asthma attack? And almost always, it's an upper respiratory problem. It's a there are triggers in the back of the nose. 
they have what they call the one airway hypothesis that is essentially says that irritants here cause bronchoconstriction here. Uh, Maggie Prophet, the lady that uh, a long time ago f figured out why women get morning sickness is to protect the baby. That was her idea. This is another of her ideas and it's a very good idea because IgE picks up a very similar relationship between allergens and toxins. And her review in the quarterly journal of quarterly review of biology uh, several years ago. Finally, as a way of illustrating this, there is a study of drowning victims that was done in Miami. And try and think of what's the connection between drowning and asthma? Well, 20% of people who drown have dry lungs. That is, there's no water in their lungs. And before this study was published, we used to think that they were killed somewhere else and dumped in the water. But this study of 220 people was done looking specifically at people who were known to have drowned. And 20% of them had no water in their lungs. When the coroners tried to figure out how they died, their conclusion was they died of bronchospasm. Well, bronchospasm is just asthma. So these people died of an asthma attack. Of course, the coroners didn't call it that, and nobody else associates asthma with the defense and with bronchospasm that is protecting the lungs from the garbage or the, or the water in the back of the nose. But that's what this process is if you look at it in a common sense kind of way. If you look at it in another way, uh, we're looking at, at helping defenses. I'm an osteopathic physician and our institutional memory goes back to the swine flu epidemic that we had in after World War I. And if you were sick enough to go into a hospital at that time and get treated, 5% of people treated by MDs died. 0.4%, 20 times less, of patients treated by DOs died. A lot of people thought that was just because of the manipulation, because that's what osteopathic physicians do. But a principle of osteopathic medicine is also that the body can heal itself if we help it. And one of the things that we knew with the flu was that a fever is a defense. Uh, we still treat fevers nowadays with antipyretics. When our kid gets a temperature of 101, we give them some dose of Tylenol or ibuprofen or if the doctor hasn't talked to you recently about problems with viruses and aspirin, we'll even use aspirin. But when you block a defense, you handicap that person's ability to deal with his illness. And this shows that difference. I think the reason for this is because osteopathic physicians did not use antipyretics to fight the fever and antitussives to fight the cough. Osteopathic physicians realized more likely that these symptoms are actually defenses. So we have evolved defenses in our game with infecting agents. They need to be honored and supported if we expect to benefit from them. If you handicap or if you hobble the defense of your favorite football team, they're going to lose the game. And it's the same with us.